Watch CBSN for reporting, insight, and analysis. The 2020 Republican National Convention. Watch live at 8.30 on CBSN. Hello, everyone. Really good to see you again. I'm Anne Marie Green. Hey, I'm Vladimir Dutte. Uh, welcome back, Anne Marie. <laughs> good to see you. Yep, good to be here. I, uh, you know, I should, you should be welcoming me back because I was gone for like two weeks while I was representing CBSN yeah. on CTM, <laughs> and you were holding the fort down. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, well, you know, you did the same for me last week um, and got a little bit of a break. I know probably a, we're very similar to a lot of people out there um, that maybe had planned vacations and then COVID hit and all your plans sort of went out the door and you had to rearrange things. So finally, after, you know, six months, took a little bit of a break with the family and it was very much appreciated. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm still trying to figure out how to get married this year, but uh, that will come later. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a <laughs> lot to get to today, um, including this. The nation's postmaster general, Louis DeJoy, is back on Capitol Hill today as concerns over potential mail delays ahead of the November election near a fever pitch. The major GOP donor and close ally of President Trump is expected to face a less than friendly reception from the Democrat-led House panel today after many of the committee members called for his removal just last week. Today's hearing also comes on the heels of a rare Saturday session when the House approved legislation intended to reverse recent changes to the Postal Service and propose sending $25 billion to the agency. For more on this, let's bring in CBS News Chief Congressional Correspondent Nancy Cordes. She's tracking all the developments from the Hill. So, Nancy, what are you hearing about how likely this bill is to go through the Senate and where Democrats go from here? Right now, it looks uh, very unlikely that it's going to go through the Senate anytime soon, Vlad. The Senate's Republican leader, Mitch McConnell, has said that he thinks the Postal Service is going to be just fine. He thinks that perhaps the Postal Service needs a cash infusion of $10 billion rather than the $25 billion that the House just passed over the weekend. But he doesn't seem to be in any hurry to get that going. Uh, the Senate is still scheduled to be out on recess for another couple of weeks, so perhaps he will take it up when he gets back. Uh, but they're not doing any kind of emergency session the way that the House did. Republicans argued the Democrats were doing that for show to try to trump up this problem. Uh, Democrats say no, they really see a, a very real crisis here. Uh, and so there is a real, uh, they're really at odds. The White House, uh, Mark Meadows, the president's chief of staff has said he's open to doing a $10 billion deal as well. But as we've seen over the course of this summer, uh, ha these two sides getting into a room and actually cutting a deal that they can both live with has been very elusive. So while everyone claims they want to send more money the, the Postal Service's way, uh, the chances that it's going to happen soon are pretty slim. And so the Postal Service released a, a statement on Sunday saying that, you know, it really appreciates the House's efforts, but there are some concerns about certain things required in the bill. What are those concerns? Mm -hmm. Right. The bill itself is actually quite simple. It's only a couple of pages. Basically, what it says is that the Postal Service has to roll back any of its new operational changes that were put in place over the summer. It has to roll them back to the service that it was providing as of January of this year. So, you know, put back all of those sorting machines that have been dismantled, return collection boxes to the streets, uh, reinstate overtime, all the things that the Postmaster General did over the summer, they're saying you got to go back and at least for now you can't make any changes. And Democrats were able to get a couple of dozen House Republicans to vote with them for that. What this Postal Service statement said over the weekend, and it was unsigned, so we don't know exactly who, who wrote it, but it did come from the agency, it says, you're tying our hands. If you're saying that we can't make any operational changes whatsoever, we're trying to cut costs, and what this bill does is really constrain us from doing anything. Uh, Democrats argue that's kind of the point. They're very suspicious of the changes that are being made right now, as you well know. Uh, they now have the documents to prove that there's been at least a temporary slowdown in the delivery of mail, and they want to press the pause button and, and wait to figure all this out before they allow the Postal Service to go forward with more changes, particularly in an election year. 
So during Friday's hearing in front of the Senate, Nancy, as you know, DeJoy acknowledged what he called a dip in service, but he disputed widespread problems. Now, on Saturday, the House Oversight Committee released some internal USPS documents that reportedly showed declines in the performance of the Postal Service beginning in July, a month after DeJoy took office. So what does this report tell us about how significant the delays may actually be? Well, the documents tell us a lot, but they don't tell us everything. What they tell us is that there was a marked drop in mail processing speed in July after he imposed some of these changes, and that that remained constant for about a month. What we can't tell is whether the slowdown has continued until the present day, because the data kind of cuts off the first week in August. So we don't know if it's bounced back as DeJoy claimed it would in his hearing on Friday or whether it's continuing to sort of peter along at the pace that we saw over the course of July and early August. DeJoy's argument was that the changes that he made were intended to make sure that trucks get out the door on time and that eventually that will have a positive impact on delivery speeds, but it's just taking time right now for USPS to adjust. And so, uh, you know, a bounce back that he felt should have taken a couple of days actually took a few weeks. That's the case that he's making. We don't know if that's right or wrong, because again, we don't have the data to show us what, what it looks like right now. And he refused to hand over that data in a timely fashion. Democrats asked him point blank, will you give us the information that you use to make some of these operational decisions? Will you give us that information right away? And he said, no. Uh, as they continue to press him, he said, well, he'll talk to some uh, postal officials about it. And he's sure to be asked those same kinds of questions in his hearing before the House of Representatives today.